Okay, this is going to be a part two to my previous previous video. I didn't like the way that turned out, and I don't do any editing. So, anyway, let's talk a little bit about this combustion combustion leak tester fluid. Uh, what this tests or or for what you'd use this for is detecting CO2 gases that are inside the uh, the cooling system. Now, coolant does not contain CO2, so we're okay with just regular coolant in. If you suspect you have a cracked cylinder head, a cracked block, which rarely doesn't happen, but uh, or a bad head gasket, this is one tool that you can use to help verify uh, that you actually have a problem. This helps pinpoint or, or identify. Uh, if you have an overheat and you think, hey, maybe my head gasket's bad, this is one tool that you can use. It's not uh, a forever use it every single time kind of tool. Uh, the flu is a little bit on the pricey side. I've, I've had this for so long I can't remember how much I paid for it. Um, you just have to remember exactly what this is telling you. And all it's going to tell you is that CO2 is in the combustion chamber. Uh, now how would you use this? First you would have your uh, vessel. Okay, it kind of looks, kind of operates like a turkey baster. So it has a, uh, uh, I forget what you would call this, we'll just call it the bulb. Uh, you squeeze the bulb and it sucks air into it. Now inside these chambers is the fluid and the air passes through the fluid. And the fluid, once it gets in contact with the CO2, will turn from blue to either green or yellow. My vessel is a, has uh, two chambers. Uh, some people say that the double chamber is more accurate. I personally don't know if that's true or not. Uh, now let's talk about how we use it. So you put the fluid inside the vessel and you walk over to your vehicle. Sorry about that noise. Uh, it's cold today, so I got a heater running. So with this, you go out to your radiator and you pull the cap. If you suspect you're having an overheat problem, your fluid level is probably gonna be low. If it's not, you have gotta lower it a little bit. Maybe a, a half a quart, if that. Maybe a couple of pints, something like that. So with the engine running, you would put this right into the radiator opening, kind of put a little bit of pressure down and start sucking, just like that, okay? You wanna do this after you've run the engine for a little bit. Um, I've had cases where it won't turn until you hit high idle or a higher RPM. So you would goose the throttle a couple times, wah, 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 something like that. You know, really run, run the RPMs up. What you're trying to do is see if our head gasket or cracked block, cracked head, is pumping combustion chamber gases into the cooling system so that this can detect. And that will sometimes not happen on a cold engine or even at idle. So you would do a couple of high RPM, really high revs. And sometimes you can just let the engine sit at, a, at maybe 2000 RPM for about a minute. You're really trying to stress it out. Because the last thing you want to do with your client or customer is say, hey, no, the engine's fine, and then they go drive it down the freeway with a, with a potential bolt blown head gasket that's starting to uh, put pressure inside the cooling system. So, here we go. We're sucking it up. It's gonna turn from blue to green to yellow. Uh, the color really doesn't matter other than not being blue. If it's off blue and goes between green and blue, there's a problem. If there's from green to yellow, there's a problem. If there's goes blue to yellow, there's a problem. Any color change indicates a problem, okay? So that is how we do a simple block test. That is what we consider a block test. Um, and again, you're checking for CO2 uh, gases 
in the combustion chamber or in the in the cooling system that's coming from the combustion chamber all right so thanks for watching and steve's auto care here and uh subscribe and tell your friends talk to you later bye